the court. Anything can happen. Hall, eight to shoot. Hall, the runner! Loose ball! It's good! With 4.4 to go! Shannon! Don't want to foul! Shannon from the corner! And it's over! Gonzaga, the slipper still fits! Now Cinderella meets Connecticut. The Huskies know anything can happen, but this year's team is intent on erasing the image of unfulfilled expectations and going where no UConn team has gone before. The final four awaits one team. Will it be David or Goliath? Arizona, where before the sun sets in the West, one team will have a ticket to the Final Four. From the America West Arena, it's the West Regional Final, a 10 versus a 1, Gonzaga and Yukon. And the bracket here in the West, Gonzaga advancing by beating Florida and UConn advancing by beating Iowa. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. And for Gonzaga, Cinderella is still alive and she likes to shoot the three. Gus, the key number for this Cinderella isn't two as in evil stepsisters, but it's three. Gonzaga has made 32 three-point field goals in this tournament. In fact, they've got eight different guys who have made three-point baskets. Richie Fromm made five of them in the big win against Florida. Matt Santangelo had two. Connecticut better get out and guard the three-point line. As for UConn, this team trying to get to the Final Four for the first time in the school's history. And Danny, they've got two great leaders, Khaled El Amin and Rip Hamilton. Gus, these two guys really did carry the load in a very physical, very tough game against Iowa. They have led Connecticut all year long, different leadership styles. Hamilton, the first team All-American, very smooth. And El Amin, nobody would accuse him of being smooth, a vocal leader, but they both have success and they're gonna need to have success today. So UConn and Gonzaga set to meet each other for the first time with a trip to the final four on the line. A sellout crowd in Phoenix, over 18,000, ready to see Gonzaga and the Connecticut Huskies in the bracket here in the West. The final, Connecticut taking on Gonzaga, UConn beating Iowa, Gonzaga, Florida. And to get to the final eight, the Gonzaga Bulldogs have been giant killers, knocking off Minnesota, Stanford, and Florida. But they face the ultimate test today against UConn. It's like David and Goliath. Well, I think this has got a lot of similarities to David versus Goliath. Yeah, I think that uh, there's no question this is the first time in this tournament that we feel like uh, we're, we're up against huge obstacles. Uh, David's awful good. Um, David can throw those rocks. With, he, he doesn't have just one slingshot. He's about uh, six of them I can think of. And he doesn't, unfortunately, do it from short range. He does it from a distance where they hurt a lot more. They're the best three-point shooting team we've faced. What we told our kids is this has got to be another Stanford effort where we understand that every possession, you can't let a great team like this get rolling. Gonzaga trying to advance to the Final Four as a number 10 seed. It will be a tremendous feat. And for more on the Bulldogs, let's go to Barry Booker. Gus, Gonzaga has generated more headlines than anyone in the tournament to this point. And they've already written one for tomorrow. They want to change UConn to you can I just spoke to their assistant coaches and looked for Gonzaga to play a little triangle and two and diamond and one today to try and contain Richard Hamilton and Khalid El Amin. Back to you, Gus. All right, Barry, so coming up, the starting lineups and the opening tip from the West. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet. Arthur Anderson, Dockers Khakis, and by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Shout out to 
80 degrees and sunny outside the America West Arena. We're set for Gonzaga and Connecticut for a trip to the Final Four. Dan Munson, second year, 37 years old. He's the head coach for the Bulldogs. His lineup in the front court from Eaton and Casey Calvary. And in the back court, Quinton Hall and Matt Santangelo. Jim Calhoun, the head coach for the Connecticut Huskies, 13th year looking for his first trip to the Final Four. And the starting lineup for UConn. Take a look in the front court, Freeman Voskel and Rip Hamilton. And in the back court, their leader, Colin Elamine and Ricky Moore. The officials today, Andre Patillo, Larry Rose, and Bobby Hunt. And Dan, early on, what should we look forward to seeing between these two? Gonzaga is going to try to shoot the three, Gus. UConn is going to try to defend the three, look for the Huskies to get out and run. They are, they are one of the country's top teams in transition. And Gonzaga coming into this game, they defeated Florida by one point on Thursday. Their profile, they play in the West Coast Conference. Close to 5,000 students in attendance. Their record, 28 and 6. That young man there, Richie Fromm, is the three-point bomber. Matt Santangelo as well. He can shoot it from the arc. Connecticut, 78-68 winners over Iowa on Thursday. So the Huskies in white, the Bulldogs in blue. And here we go. Controlled by Gonzaga. Here's Quentin Hall, the senior from the Bahamas. He draws LME. Connecticut opens in the man-to-man. -man. Hamilton is matched up against Fromm. Santangelo. Santangelo, very important as a ball handler. And Gus Ricky Moore is all over it. Hall, cut off by LME. Picks up his dribble, 12 to shoot. Casey Calvary down the lane. Six to shoot, Fromm, quick release. Off the back iron, Freeman boxes out and comes up with the ball. Freeman is only six feet seven, but he's a tremendous rebounder. Eaton is 6'11", and Freeman moved him right out. And Gonzaga opens in the man-to-man -man as well. Khaled Elami, the sophomore from Minneapolis. He is the straw that stirs the drink for this UConn squad. Ricky Moore. And a whistle and foul on the baseline. Dan Munson complaining about that particular call, and Larry Rose <laughs> giving him the stare down early in the game. Munson is upset. He felt as if there was some physical play when his team had the ball on offense. Doesn't understand why the foul was called against the Bulldogs. Matt Santangelo picks up his first. A minute into the first half, no score. From Phoenix, Rip Hamilton, great ball fake. Step back and knocks it down from 12. And here's the Connecticut pressure. Santangelo quickly over the line, jump stop, rise and fire, got it. Sometimes if you can beat pressure, you're going to get wide open shots. In Connecticut, they like to pressure, but they've got to be careful. They cannot let a team of shooters like Gonzaga get wide open opportunities. Freeman, guarded by Calvary, across the lane, jump hook, short, got it back, blocked. Calvary, what an athlete in the pivot for this Gonzaga squad. Guy who on Midnight Madness jumps over students to demonstrate his dunks. And when Calvary's able to get his feet set on the inside, not only can he jump to a good height, but he also gets up very quickly as Freeman gets the rebound. Calvary times his jump. Gonzaga is not small on the inside. Calvary is six feet eight. Eaton is six feet 11. He led the West Coast Conference in block shots last year, tied for second this season. Santangelo really be impressed by Ricky Moore. A lot of dribbling for Santangelo. Down the lane and a five second ball. The five second violation is in effect when you're dribbling. If the defender is within six feet of you now, if you get your head and shoulders past the defender, the count is off. But Santangelo never able to do that. Moore, one of the country's top defenders. Here's Ricky Moore, senior from Augusta, Georgia. Starts on the wing, guarded by Santangelo. Elamine. 
Good matchup here, Elamine and Hall. Both very quick. Elamine up in the air, loose ball. Hall grabs it in the corner. Gonzaga on the move. All the way open, Eaton, and he had it blocked from behind by Freeman. Freeman shovels it. Elamine jump stop, and Eaton with the ball. Gonzaga does not mind running up and down. Santangelo calling for the high screen. Hesitation to the basket. Off the glass. And Ricky Moore comes up with it. Boy, what a rebound. Hamilton got the step on the baseline. Cut off. Fadeaway jump shot. Strong. Calvary with the ball. Speaking of strong, Calvary's rebound was very strong as well. This little guy dribbling the ball is more physical than you might think. He and Elamine are going to have a great matchup today. He also has feline quickness on defense. Pull up, jump shot, rebounded by Calvary in a new shot clock. Once again, he reloads, and this time Jeremy Eaton buries it. The senior from Benton City, Washington. He is not a three-point shooter, but he can go out to 18 feet and make the jump shot. So Gonzaga, up 4-2, 16-33 to go here in the first half of play. The winner advancing to the final four, a 10 versus a 1. We've got a mismatch now. Hall is matched up against Hamilton. Let's see if Connecticut realizes and tries to punch it inside. Eaton hedging out. Four to shoot. Ricky Moore steps back and got it. Knocked it down with confidence to tie it up at four. And that was outstanding defense. Just a tremendous offensive sequence for the Huskies. Hall oh, with a quick step and he draws the foul inside. And they're going to count the basket. A little continuation there. We talked about what a great matchup this could be. Elamine against Hall. Hall maybe has a step in quickness, just gets his head and shoulders by Elamine. When Elamine bodies him, the ball goes down. Nice job by Hall to shoot it when he feels the contact. So Elamine picking up his second foul. And Elamine takes a quick seat. Quentin Hall misses the free throw. And he got the rebound. Steps back. Loose ball from diving on the sideline. And he's out of bounds. But look at the hustle already by the Bulldogs. 15 and 52 to go. They're up by a deuce. 11.39 to go in the first half. 13 apiece and a look at the databank. Most NCAA tournament appearances without a trip to the Final Four where at the top of the list is UConn. They would certainly like to change that. It's funny what great success they've had at UConn under Jim Calhoun, but if they don't get to the Final Four, a 31-3 and three season will be considered a disappointment. Tell me how crazy that is. Harrison and Saunders. Ricky Moore. Along with Vasco. Rashmel Jones also on the floor for UConn. Saunders pull up jump shot and he buried it. And somebody's just lost him. Thought about it, took it, and it counts. From now, guarded by Moore. Over the line. Harrison now going to try to match up against Hall. Nielsen, guarded by Rochelle Jones. Pascal shoot it. And he does. Rebounded inside Harrison. Nice rebound. Blocking out Hall. In the corner, Jones. Inside, Vasco jump book. Hard off the window. Tapped around into the hands of Nielsen. Quentin Hall. Speed dribble, kicks it back from. Leisure, one hand rebound. And a steal. And that'll result in a fast break. Harrison, and he's fouled. And Harrison down on the baseline. And he's holding his knee, or hamstring. You just simply cannot turn the ball over to Connecticut in situations that allow them to get down the court. Harrison dribbling the ball in the middle, and you can see the expression on his face as he throws the ball up on the rim. I think it's a hamstring, Gus. 
Right before he leaves his feet, I think he pulled that hamstring in Connecticut with El Amin sitting on the bench with two personal fouls, can't afford to lose another guard. Now near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a genuine Chevrolet, most viable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed over $7 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So E.J. Harrison, a senior from Danbury, Connecticut. They're flexing that thing as this, as if it's a knee, and let's watch that step right there where the knee just goes right out from under it. And it did buckle a bit. And Harrison gets up, though, and he walks off on his own. So Richard Hamilton comes into the game to shoot free throw. You are allowed to bring in a guy to shoot the free throw if it's a technical free throw or if you have an injury. Harrison being tended to. Hamilton, great free throw shooter. First one is good. And Rip Hamilton in the tournament, the first three games, he's put on a show. Check out his numbers. First team All-American, and that, those are certainly All-American numbers right there. From Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Seven points and a rebound. Missed the second. Leisure with the board. Great tip by Fromm. Gonzaga, one of six from the three-point line so far. They were 12 of 22 on Thursday against Florida. Connecticut does a great job defending that three-point line. Leisure hops inside. Got it back. And he is fouled. Vosco. And that's Vosco's second foul. So Connecticut, a couple of their big guns in foul trouble already. El Amin on the bench with two, and Vosco now draws his second. If Connecticut is going to defend the three effectively, then obviously Gonzaga is going to have to get something inside, and Leisure picks up another one of those long rebounds and draws the foul. Leisure at the line. And this... Gonzaga squad, a very good free throw shooting team. They shoot 72% as a team on the season. Second one good as well. Gonzaga plays 10 people and they all contribute, sometimes more, sometimes less, but they've got 10 guys who contribute. Eight of those guys can shoot the three point basket. Connecticut in this tournament, Gus, they've held their opponents to under 25% three-point shooting, so it's not going to be easy for Gonzaga. Jones to the basket. Oh, what a tip. Tipped up and in by Saunders. So Edmund Saunders gives Connecticut an 18-15 lead. Under 10 to go. Rom dumps it down. Eaton wheels on the baseline. Nice-looking baby hook. Really is clever with the ball on the inside. Jones the other way. Box and one now going on out there for Gonzaga. And they're guarding Hamilton. Nielsen is guarding Hamilton. Everybody else playing zone. Iowa tried this on Thursday. Jones squares up and knocked it down with confidence. This is a tough defense to execute against Connecticut because they have so many other offensive weapons. 2017. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Calgary down the lane. Got it. We told you this kid's an athlete. And he's the guy who can put the ball on the deck and go to the basket. And again, UConn really getting out to defend the perimeter. Very intelligent by Gonzaga to go to the basket. Ricky Moore, Jones, Saunders, Freeman, and Hamilton for UConn. In white. Freeman in the pivot. Jump hook off the heel of the rim and out of bounds. Last touch by the Huskies. Substitutions in the game. Mori comes in for Connecticut and Santangelo back. One thing that Dan Munson's defense, the box and one, is able to do is slow Connecticut down a little bit. They may not be able to stop them, but at least they're stopping that transition basketball and making them pay at a, play at a slower, less comfortable pace. Harrison has a mild knee sprain, and he will be back. Eaton, strong to the basket, and a foul on the 
floor. And it looks as if Gonzaga, Dan, is taking what the defense gives them. We it's said the inside this, game this right now. This is a very intelligent basketball team. A real good job to get the ball inside to Eaton. And you can see Eaton's skill as he's able to spin and use both hands on the inside. There they go again. Eaton gathers himself. And Ricky Moore with the rebound. Nice defense that time by Saunders. Mooring wide open. Quick release. Tipped up and Hall, the smallest guy on the floor with the rebound. Hall pops out on the wing. Eaton again. Eaton in the pivot. He walked. And he walked. Six turnovers for Gonzaga. Seven and 34 to go in the first half of play. Huskies up by a point. The game summary here in the first half. Good defense by Connecticut, limiting Gonzaga to one of six shooting. But Khaled Elamine, only four minutes played, no points. He already has two fouls, Dan Bond. And that has been a big factor in the game. Connecticut needs Elamine if they're going to compete against a top-notch team like Gonzaga. The other thing is, not only is Elamine on the bench with two fouls, but so is Jake Voskel because Voskel's not in the game. Gonzaga has been attempting to punch the ball inside. They haven't been able to exploit the three-point line due to some top-notch Connecticut defense, so they're now trying to go inside. So Ricky Moore brings it up the floor along with Hamilton, Freeman, Saunders, and Moore. Three guards on the court for this Connecticut squad. Moore playing with the tender right knee. Hall is now matched up against Hamilton in the box and one. Isn't that interesting? Saunders. <laughs> Hall diving out of bounds, and Connecticut gets it back. Tonight on CBS, meet two private eyes who learn from the best. Chuck Norris from the producers of Walker, Texas Ranger. It's the next generation of justice in all new Sons of Thunder tonight on CBS. 7.06 to go. First half of play. UConn up 2019. New shot clock for the Huskies. Inside, Saunders jump stop. Rebound, Freeman. And jump ball again. Bulldogs once again getting the ball back. And what do you think about this rule? I think when the defense can get the held ball, Gus, and it's clear like that, it's a pretty good rule. Saunders not able to make the basket inside. And then Freeman, remember, he's 6'7", Eaton is 6'11", and I think the Gonzaga size actually making a difference. Santangelo, Fromm, and Hall in the backcourt with Calvary and Eaton. For Gonzaga, here's Eaton. Calvary for 20. And he got the box. Gonzaga up 22-20. Morin lost it, rebounded by Santangelo. Gonzaga with numbers, Fromm spots up for three. And Hamilton with the rebound, Little strong. Gonzaga stays in that box and one. Saunders knocked away into the hands of Santangelo. Jim Calhoun may have to put Elamine back into the game just so they can handle this trick defense that's being played by Gonzaga. Hall got the screen, knocked away. Moore, quick hands inside both teams. Moore, <laughs> and a foul on the baseline. But look at Calvary get back into the play. For updated stats and complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Three-point field goal shooting. Gonzaga, a team that shoots 39% on the season, two of eight, Connecticut 0 for 1. Keep in mind, however, that Connecticut on defense throughout the entire year has limited opponents to under 30% shooting from beyond the three-point arc, and in the tournament, they're even better, under 25%. They can defend out there. Their problem has been the inside. Ricky Moore, been a starter since his freshman year. Dislocated his shoulder his freshman year in the NCAAs against Colgate. More than enough. But uh, his impact is made mostly on the defensive side. Certainly he means more to the team than those numbers would indicate. Santangelo, he has two fouls for Gonzaga. Second one good for Moore. 
five and 53 to go in the first half of play. We're tied at 22. The West Regional Final. The winner moving on to the final four. And a whistle and foul away from the basketball. Foul is going to be against Mooring, trying to defend Nielsen and Dan Munson. Dan Munson, he has got eight guys who can shoot the three, and so you've got to guard them all. And that creates those kinds of holding fouls, trying to beat the screen. For Gonzaga, they have seven players that shoot 35% or better from the three-point line. Their eighth player shoots 34%. And another quick whistle inside. That foul is against Freeman. Floyd setting the screen and getting just knocked down. Andre Patillo, Larry Rose, and Bobby Hunt are the officials. Get that screen set in your stationary. The guy can't run you over, and that's exactly what Freeman did. Now they're going to stick Ryan Floyd on the free throw line. He's a 72% free throw shooter. And with five minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half of play, UConn over the limit with 17 fouls. And Floyd at the line makes the first. Harrington, Washington. Second good as well. Gonzaga up by two. Haven't made the threes, but they're now six of seven from the free throw line. For UConn, their best backcourt player on the bench, Khaled El Amin. Rebounded inside, Spink just checked in off the bench. Gonzaga with the chance to add to their lead. Lobbed inside, Calvary. on the lob pass inside and he lowered the defense has it any higher he can't catch it what great hands and then getting it into the basket this is just a great job to catch it get stopped go underneath the basket for the score so Calvary at the free throw line he's from Tacoma missed the free throw Freeman with the rebound Jake Vosco with those two personal fouls has to come back in the game because Gonzaga really starting to dominate the inside play. Do you even let Elamine come back into the game at this point? Obviously not. And I think that's a pretty good decision because if he's out there, he's got to be battling Hall, and Hall's just too quick. Rip Hamilton. And with Elamine on the bench, Hamilton really has to step up on the offensive side. 26-24. Hamilton with eight points. Make it nine. Windhall guarded by Moore. Hotties flying around. Spink wide open. Floyd with the rebound and a new shot clock. Connecticut stays in the man-to-man. -man. Spink is the one guy on the team who can't shoot it from out there. Windhall. Jab step. Calvary faces. Back, bumped, blocked. Bosco, nice play. Dangerous play by Bosco. He's got those two fouls. Hamilton around the back, and he turns it over. Here's Hall on the move. Quinton Hall forced it up, tapped out, and Floyd with it. Crowd wanted a foul. Gonzaga really doing a nice job playing quickly when the opportunity presents, but slowing it down on the other occasions, and now Dan Munson wants a 20-second timeout. 3.48 to go in the first half. Gonzaga, a 10, leading a 1, 26-24. Now tonight on CBS, she's just not, uh, she, she's not just another pretty face. When Kelly Hugh walks the beat, law enforcement is a beautiful thing. An all-new martial law starring Sammo Hung and Arsenio Hall tonight on CBS. Guys who move are awfully difficult to guard. Quinton Hall, even in this diamond or box and one, runs Hall right into the pick by Bosco and is able to score. Bosco, however, has those two fouls. He's got to be careful. You don't want to pick up a foul on the offensive end. Now, these two teams have two common opponents, both beating Stanford and Washington. Connecticut beat Stanford 82-74 and Washington 82-71. Here's Floyd. Bounce pass inside. And a foul from behind on Ricky Moore. Oh, 
Once again, the Connecticut, the Connecticut desire to stop the three-point shot. Penetration, three guys around the dribbler. Hall just cuts to the basket. Moore loses track of him. So, Quentin Hall, a junior college transfer, the Grand Bahamas makes the first free throw. Came off the bench last year, but now really is a leader for this team in the backcourt, especially handling pressure. Missed the second one, Bosco with the ball. 3.34 to go first half, 27-24. Bulldogs on top of the Huskies. And a whistle and foul, a lot of bumping and grinding. Hall's going to pick the up the foul. The bumping and grinding, I think Hall can get away with when he reaches and grabs Richard Hamilton. The officials are going to call that. Hall down, number 11. You can see he wraps his arm around Hamilton, pushes him out of bounds, and that's what the official calls. Not much of a foul there, but what you have to understand, the official is behind Hamilton, and he sees Hall's hands come around the back of Richard Hamilton. That looks like a hold. That's what he calls. So 18 fouls against Gonzaga. Rip Hamilton at the line, shooting one and one. Nine points and a rebound. And he missed the front end, but got the rebound. All knocked out of bounds by Floyd. 3.24 to go first half of play. 27-24, Gonzaga. Zags up 27-24. The tournament summary, three number one seeds remain in the Elite Eight, Michigan State, Duke, and Connecticut, and the Big Ten with a good record, the Big East as well. Big Ten, Michigan State gonna match up against Kentucky tomorrow. That ought to be a great game. Wayne Turner looking to become the first non-Duke player to play in four Final Fours. Connecticut with the basketball. Ricky Moore. Harrison back into the game. Cut off. Still guarding Hamilton in that diamond in one defense. And Damon fouled inside. Penetration is really dangerous against this kind of a defense because the help responsibilities aren't well defined against the guy who is not the primary guy you're trying to guard, and Freeman does a nice job getting to the basket. So Spink picks up his first foul. You play that kind of a defense, a diamond in one, so you can stop the one guy. In this case, Richard Hamilton. Somebody else is going to take it to the basket. It's hard to defend. Now Freeman. Missing the free throw. He's a 70% free throw shooter. His last game against Iowa, 10 points and six rebounds. He was the most outstanding player in the Big East tournament in New York. He has a guy who has shown the ability to step up when Elamine and Hamilton aren't able to. Got the second, 3.06 to go. Gonzaga up by two. And you just get the idea that with Elamine only playing four minutes in this first half, that it's an opportunity that Gonzaga really should take advantage of. They need to have a pretty good lead at halftime. Floyd curling around the screen, and he's fouled inside. And all of a sudden, this Gonzaga team, they're not really looking for the three-point shots as much. They are really driving the ball strong to the basket or getting it in the low post. Taking what the defense has given them. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Rick Majerus will update you on all the tournament news, and we'll have a report from the South Regional Final. All coming up on Pennzoil at the half. First free throw is good for Floyd. And the foul was called against Harrison. Second one good as well. Now Boring back into the game. Harrison takes a seat. So Ricky Moore along with Saunders, Freeman, Mooring, and Rip Hamilton on the court for Connecticut. There's the diamond in one defense. Four guys playing zone. One guy Hall playing man-to-man -man against Hamilton. Ooh, dangerous pass. Eight to shoot. Moore crosses over and five. So how do you beat 
once again these kinds of kinds of trick defenses. We saw Rick Majerus last year, who's in the studio for CBS, against Arizona. His Utah team ran a triangle and two as they gave uh, Bibby and Simon problems. How do you def do you go against this kind of defense? First thing you'd like to do if you're Connecticut is get in transition and beat the defense down the court. If they can't set the defense, then they can't play it against you. The second thing, I think it's a real good idea to penetrate off the dribble. That's what Moore did, and he's now at the free throw line where he makes the first. What about the guy that's being guarded? The guy that's being guarded has to continue to work very hard, and that's what Hamilton is doing. The thing that this defense has done is it has slowed Connecticut down. Gonzaga has stopped shooting the long threes. There's no long rebounds to be had. They're taking the ball to the basket. No fast break opportunities for Connecticut, and that's made it a half-court game. Second free throw good for Ricky Moore, 29-27. 2 and 20 to go in the first half. Paul, Calvary, Floyd, along with Fromm and Eaton for the Bulldogs. Fromm, quiet in the first half. He was quiet on Thursday, only had three points, ended with 17. Paul pops out. Paul down the lane, tries to feed Eaton right out of bounds. Good thought. Eaton not ready, though, for the pass. Eight turnovers for Gonzaga. Nice defensive adjustment, though, by Connecticut. They really collapsed on the ball and defended the passing lanes. Inside, Saunders, nice play, high off the bank. Great ball movement. That's another way you can beat that defense. Saunders with six points. Tied at 29. Connecticut fans right behind their bench trying to get into it. the ball. Here's Moore. Connecticut in transition. Harrison short arms the layup. Loose ball. Trump picks it up and gets it to Hall. Hall behind the back. From wide open. Bullseye. A wild sequence. <laughs> and Gonzaga takes a 32-29 lead. Figure they practice that outlet pass from your knees. Only their third three-pointer of the game. Under 50 seconds. Hamilton and a foul on the floor. And that's two fouls against Quinton Hall. Well, you have to admire the way Hamilton has handled himself in this situation. He simply has not stopped work, and he's moving without the ball. And when he's not forcing anything, though, when he gets the opportunity, he takes advantage. He hasn't shot free throws very well today. Richard Hamilton, one of four from the free throw line. He's an 84% free throw shooter on the season. And the first is good. And there's Richard Hamilton's father, who nicknamed him when he was a baby Rip. So rip. That's where it came from. Second one is good. 32-31. Gonzaga leading UConn. 37 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Fromm dribbles it off of his foot. Pull up from deep. Saunders snatches it down. For all the adversity they've had, as Jim Calhoun calls a 20-second timeout, with Alameen not being able to play very much with the fouls, Connecticut has a chance to lead at halftime. Now, Monday on CBS, here's some March Madness that'll leave you laughing. Catch the show that critics are calling sitcom royalty. Kevin James and Jerry Stiller star in The King of Queens Monday on CBS. <laughs> Khaled Elamine, he's only played four minutes, picked up two quick fouls, and has sat on the bench for most of the first half, now getting ready to come in. 
I think Jim Calhoun realizes how important it is, maybe just from a psychological factor, that with as well as Gonzaga has played, as much as Connecticut has struggled, that it would be good to have the lead at halftime. Elamine's really got to be careful that he does not pick up an offensive foul. Shot clock turned off. Connecticut playing for one shot. And Bobby Hunt calling the officials together. Connecticut is saying, look, just because you guys stopped the game to get things together, we should have that time back on the clock. Nine seconds to go. Ricky Moore back out to Hamilton. And that's the end of the first half of play. What a game so far. Gonzaga, Dan Munson, his squad slowing things down, and they lead by one. And right now, Jim Calhoun is on the floor talking to the officials. He's talking to Andre Patillo. Now let's go to Barry Booker. Okay, that's the end of the first half of play with the score. Gonzaga on top of Connecticut by one. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station.